Hello everyone, hello everyone, and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 155, and we're going to be going over the calendar module. If you're not familiar with the calendar module, it essentially allows you to build an event calendar that has month, week, day, or even year views for the calendar itself. Before we get started, I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also, go ahead and follow at Adam Leering on Twitter as well, since he's been doing a lot of Code Karate videos lately. We do have an ebook coming out soon. It's coming, and make sure to sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. We do appreciate the follow there. We're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is make sure we have all the date modules downloaded. Well, it's one date module, I guess, that you can download. One project from Drupal.org, but multiple modules that you actually need to enable. You're going to need the date API. We're using the date pop-up. You'll need the actual date module itself and date views for to follow along with this example. The next thing is to make sure you have the calendar module enabled, which I will go ahead and enable this right now. Uh, the way the calendar module works is it essentially you can use a content type. It can use other types of entities as well, but we're going to go ahead and just stick with nodes for this example. And it uses a date field on that content type. So we're going to go ahead and add a new content type and we're going to call this event. We'll call the title event title and we'll pretty much leave everything else at its default. So we're going to click save and add fields and we are going to add an event date field. We're going to select date We'll make it a pop-up calendar, and we'll click Save. We next need to select what date attributes we want to collect. Since we're doing a calendar and we're going to want to have week and day views, we're going to go ahead and collect all of these up through minute. We don't need up to the second. We're also going to offer an end date but not necessarily require it. That'll allow us to set a specific duration for the event. We'll use the site's time zone handling and we'll leave everything else the same and click Save. Just confirm that everything's what you need. You can add some help text. Click Save Settings and this will bring us back to the actual managed fields. I'm going to go ahead and pull the date up here just to make it a little easier. And we're going to go ahead and add just two quick events. So we'll call one event one. And we'll go ahead and select June 9th. We'll go from 7.15 to 9.15 for the first event. We will grab some text to add to the body and we will click save. We'll then add one more quick one. Call this event 2 and let's not collect an end date here. We will just go to June 10th and say 11 o'clock and we won't have an end date. We can also Grab some text and paste it in. And there we go. We have our two events created with our dates set. The next step is to, of course, build our calendar. Calendar, the calendar module is all based off of views. So if you're familiar with views, some of it is going to be just second nature, but it is a little bit different. There's a few additional options and a, a few different things you need to look at. So if you go to the structure views page, you'll see there's an add view from template. You're going to want to click that and that's going to give you a list of templates to use. It's all based on the date field you created. So you're going to want to find your date field, in this case field event date, and use that template. 
So you're going to go ahead and click add on the date field that you want to use for your calendar. You can give it a name. We'll go ahead and keep calendar. And you click OK there and now you have what's pretty familiar, just a normal views page. You can see there's a month, week, day, and a year page view. These are all, these first four are page views. There's also a block and an upcoming events block. So we're going to go ahead and just keep everything at its default now and click save. If you click this view month, it's going to bring you to your actual calendar. You can see there's tabs on top for month, week, day, and year. If you click next, you can see that we have an event one and an event two. If we click on it, it just brings us to the actual node page itself. So it's pretty much what you'd expect from a view. However, there are some other things we can do to this. One thing you'll notice is the path that it creates is based off of your field name. and It's not necessarily the cleanest looking path, so we're going to go ahead and change that. We're just going to make it, since we're only having one calendar on this site, we're safe to do this. If you are going to display multiple calendars, you'd need to, of course, figure out what you wanted each path to be. So we're going to do this for all the page displays. So it will say calendar slash whatever the, whether it's month, week, day, or year. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The next thing is if you come into uh, some of the settings over here, you have specific calendar settings. Here are a few different options. You can decide if you want to display it as a mini calendar, if you want to use full week names, abbreviated names, if you want to show week numbers, how many items to display. If, you, if there are multi-day events, so an event that spans across multi -days, multiple days, so let's say you went from a Monday to a Friday, you could elect to hide specific rows for multi-day events. We're going to leave everything at its default because that's pretty much what we need for this example. But you can change it if you need to. If you click on the settings link next to calendar entities, there's a few more options here. One of the cool ones is this legends, legend colors. Here you can change the color or it'll add a little stripe, I guess, on top of the actual event so you can kind of differentiate between different types of events and you can do this by adding a separate content type let's say you had uh, an event a certain event type and maybe you had a group event for your entire team or a team event you could add another content type and you could give each one a different color when you're creating your second content type you just need to make sure to use the same date field so instead of creating a second new date field you just want to add an existing field and add your date field. The other cool thing you can do is you can create it based on taxonomy and that's what we're going to show here as an example. So we're going to add a new taxonomy vocabulary. I'm just going to open it in a new tab here and we're going to call it department. And this is going to allow us to in this example have a department calendar for maybe a sales department and maybe a development department. So you could have different events show up a little bit differently so you can differentiate between the different types of events. So we're going to add two terms. First one is just going to be sales and the second one will be development. So we will come back to our calendar, well actually no, first we have to add this field on the content type, so we'll go to our event content type, manage fields, we're going to add a term reference field, we'll call this department, and you, we'll use a select list, because we only want one option to be selected at a time. We want the vocabulary, or the vocabulary to be department, click save, and make sure that only one option is able to be selected at a time and click save there. So now move this around and save it. Now we'll need to come back to our two events that we have, which is event one and event two, and we will edit those. 
The first one we'll go ahead and say is a development event and the second one we will go ahead and say is a sales event. Now we can come back to our calendar here once this reloads. If we come into the settings we want to select based on taxonomy. However, you'll notice it's not going to work. It says you must add a term field to this view. So this is to tell the calendar which terms to allow. So you have to add a field here for your department or for whatever term you created and added to your content type. We're going to go ahead and add that. And we're going to go ahead and click exclude from display because we don't actually want to display it on the view but we do want it to be available for the actual calendar module to be able to read and to use for the legend colors. So now if we come back to taxonomy, you'll see the term field is department because that's the only one we have added and you can select different colors for the different departments. So we can say the development's some type of red and perhaps the sales is some type of blue. So we will save that and click save. Now if we come to our view month you'll see we have a red one for the development and a lighter blue for the sales. If we go to the week just to see how the week view looks you'll notice that th those stripes don't necessarily carry over but you do have a week view and a day view is also there. We'll go ahead and just edit the URL to get to the 9th and you'll see we have event 1 there and on the 10th we have our event 2. So that's, I mean there's the basics of getting started with the calendar module. Nothing too complicated but there are you know a lot of moving parts so you kind of got to play around with some things sometimes. One thing you will notice is you can do legend colors for the week and day views and even the year view I believe. But you just have to set those up so you can go ahead and do that. One other thing you can do is you can add a legend to the actual calendar and that'll show you what what the colors actually mean. So we're going to go ahead and drag this up to our sidebar here just to show it. We'll save it and then sometimes, at least the first time I did it, I had to actually come in here and configure it. Make sure you have the right legend view. I just will hold, go ahead and have the block title be none, but you could have that say calendar department. We'll just say department. And in this case I only want it on calendar pages, so any page that starts with calendar, just so it doesn't show on every page. So if I save that, come back, you'll see I now have a department legend for development and sales. If I go back to the month view, you'll see that they match up the colors so you can easily tell the difference between the different types of events. So that's all we're going to go over today. There's a lot more you can do with the date modules and the calendar modules. So go ahead and experiment with those. Let me know if you have any questions or run into any problems. And as always, make sure to follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, follow at Adam Leering, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.